Hello everybody and welcome to our Good Friday lesson today. So today we're going to focus on why it is so important that Jesus stayed on the cross for us and um, what we actually managed to achieve because of Jesus doing this act. Let's have a quick prayer and then we'll get started with our lesson. Let's pray. Father God, we just thank you that we can be together again today. Thank you for bringing us so far in our week. We just pray that you'll open our hearts and open our minds and help us to understand what we're going to hear today. In Jesus' name, Amen. Okay, so let's dive in right away. Phoebe Ann is going to be doing our first Bible reading, which is Matthew 27, verses 24 to 26. Pilate saw that he wasn't getting anywhere and that a riot was developing. So he sent for a bowl of water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. The responsibility is yours. And, the pe and all the people yelled back, We will take responsibility for his death. We and our children. So Pilate released Bar Barabbas to them. He ordered Jesus' flogged with a lead, a lead whip, then turned him over to the Roman soldiers to be crucified. Tamar is going to be doing our second reading, which is from Matthew 27, verses 32 to 51. Along the way, they came across a man named Simon, was from Cyrene, and the soldiers forced him to carry Jesus' cross. And they went out to a place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. The soldiers gave Jesus wine mixed with bitter gall, but when he had tasted it, he refused to drink it. After they had nailed him to the cross, the soldiers gambled for his clothes by throwing dice. They then sat around and kept guard as he hung there. A sign was fastened above Jesus' head, announcing the charges against him. It read, This is Jesus, King of the Jews. Two revolutionaries were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. The people passing by shouted abuse, shaking their heads in mockery. Look at you, they yelled at him. You said that you were going to destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days. Well then, if you are the Son of God, save yourself and come down from the cross. The leading priests, the teachers of religious law, and the elders also mocked Jesus. He saved others, they scoffed, but he can't save himself. So he is the King of Israel, is he? Let him come down from the cross right now and we will believe in him. He trusted God, so let God rescue him now if he wants him. For he said, I am the Son of God. Even the revolutionaries who were crucified with him ridiculed him in the same way. At noon, darkness fell across the whole land until three o'clock. At about three o'clock, Jesus called out with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lema sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Some of the bystanders misunderstood and thought he was calling for the prophet Elijah. One of them ran and filled a sponge with sour wine, holding it up to him on a reed stick so that he could drink. But the rest said, Wait, let's see whether Elijah comes to save him. Then Jesus shouted out again, and he released his spirit. At that moment, the curtain in the sanctuary of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook, and rocks split apart. Thanks, girls, for those awesome readings. So, as we heard, Jesus had a great deal of weight on his shoulders, literally because of the cross that he was carrying. And he actually even had help from Simon to help carry his cross. And then later on, the weight of all of our sins on his shoulders. And if you can remember, sin and God do not mix. That is why Jesus felt like as if God had forsaken him, even though God never, ever left Jesus, not for a second. Just like he will never, ever leave you 
even for a second. When we sin, we push God away from us, even if it's just a little bit at a time. The, re the way to stop that from happening is when we ask for forgiveness, when we realize we've done something wrong. And Jesus helped make that easier. He helped connecting to God that much easier than what it was before he was there. Because we can go through Jesus' blood and pray to God directly. In the Old Testament, people thought that they had to go into the temple and a priest had to go and speak to God for him. Now, with that curtain tearing wide open and the ground breaking open, Jesus proved that you do not need a priest to go and talk to God. You can do it yourself. But at the same time, he did feel incredibly lonely, incredibly hurt for those few hours on, the, on that hill on the cross. So he understands when we feel hurt, when we feel lonely. So you are not alone ever. And God understands that a little bit better as well now with us because he experienced the same thing when Jesus died on the cross. So what we need to remember now is that we need to be thankful for that refreshing blood that Jesus cleansed us with. That he had the heart that loved us so much that he stayed on that cross. And he managed to take all of us in when he died away from us. That is why it is so important that we celebrate this Good Friday. To remember the time that Jesus had on the cross. So that we can be reminded that we are not alone. And that even though we are Christians, we are going to have tough spots in our life. But God is always there. He will always, always love us and protect us. We just need to be able to remember that when we do something bad or sinful, that we need to ask for forgiveness. So what we are needing today is some wood glue, some colouring materials, whether they be crayons, cookies or paint, and six little pieces of stick. And obviously something that you can work on so that you don't make a mess on your work surface so yes if you guys and then what we're going to do is of these sticks we are going to color them in into specific colors we've used yellow red black and blue so you guys can color in and sort your six sticks out how you would like them to be. All right, yo. Okay, so what we've done to start our craft is stick the two red pieces together to make the shape of a cross because Jesus bled for our sins and died on the cross for us. And we've got a little heart there because he loved us so much. Now, as you can see, Jesus is all alone. There's no one there. Or so it seems. God was with him, but he felt alone. Now with us, we're going to be a little bit different. We have Jesus already, which is why it's so important that we celebrate that he's on the cross. So if we want Jesus to save us, what we can do is put our sins at the foot of the cross. So we've colored our sins black and we're putting our sins at the foot of the cross. Okay. So now, what else did we benefit from because Jesus um, did this so many years ago for us is that we managed to get the Holy Spirit with us. And if we ask the Holy Spirit 
to help us. The Holy Spirit guides us and leads us with the help and direction of Jesus. In our lives but also what else happens is that we are fortunate enough to have the Bible nowadays also to help guide us and better yet we even have our Christian family so that means everyone at church all of our leaders from hub wave and smarties is with us and they can help us use our bibles correctly so when we have all of our sins at the foot of the cross and we have the holy spirit and our bible guiding us remembering that jesus bled for us and died for our sins we are made righteous in the sight of god And we are then joined to the most amazing thing of all. We are made righteous. And we get put right with God. So Jesus dying on the cross helped make us from sinful people to righteous people with the help of the Holy Spirit and our Bible and our Christian families. So that's why it is so important that Jesus was alone on the cross for us on that day so that we could be saved and we, our hearts can be made pure with God. Let's just let this dry and we will later on show you what it looks like all together. Yes. So when your crosses are done, you can either have them um, propped up so you can use one of your extra sticks as a prop and you can put your cross frame on a desk or on the windowsill or on a shelf that's somewhere in your room that will make you remember where you are right now in thankfulness for Jesus dying on the cross. Or you can put a little loop on it like we did where we can hang it up into our windows next year for Easter time or on our door frame. So when someone comes into our house, they can see that we are thankful for the cross and that Jesus hung there on the cross for us. Or if it's easier, do you have it stuck down on a piece of paper and the piece of paper becomes your frame and you can put that piece of paper on the fridge so that every day when you go into the kitchen and you open up that fridge, you see the cross and you realize the importance of what Jesus has done to you on this amazing Good Friday. But the story gets even better and that you'll have to wait for Sunday for. So tune in and hopefully the craft that we all get to do with our moms and dads will be a yummy one and an exciting one. So please, let's just take a, a moment to thank God for everything he's done for us on the cross. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for dying on the cross. Thank you for having the strength to staying there for us. Father God, we just pray that you will wash us whiter than snow. Help us to open our hearts to you. So that we can be blessed by you. Help us to be able to go and tell our friends what an amazing time this is for us. And how special we are because you love us. Because you died on the cross for us. And we just pray that you will continue to bless and keep us. In Jesus name. Amen. So we will see you guys on Sunday and have something exciting to do. Be blessed.